This is what we're doing today. I ain't gotta stress no more. I'm just living the good life. Trying to see what's next like. What's up guys, Dennis Films here, back with another video. And today we're talking about how I edit a music video in Adobe Premiere Pro in 2021. So about three years ago, I released a video on how I edit a music video. Well, since then, the process has changed a little bit, and well, I wanna give you a few updates on how I edit a music video. So, with all that said, I know y'all ready to get in. I don't wanna waste your time. Let's jump into okay, it. Okay, guys, so one of the main things that I've changed in how I shoot music videos is mainly that I break the song into parts now. So, what I used to do was I would do four or five performances and run through the entire song, and then through the music video, cut through those four or five performances with B-roll. But now what I do is I break the hook, the verse, and hook, verse number two, bridge, all that stuff. I break it apart and they have their own scenes. And I never revert back to a previous shot because the goal is to keep the audience engaged. So you want the image to constantly be changing in the scenery. So with this music video, which I shot last year, that was shot in parts. So what we're going to is we're going to the hook and second verse for this portion. So this video is actually Kareem, Good Life. Let's start off. The very first thing we're gonna do is label our footage. So as you can see in my media browser, I have my performances and B-roll labeled. Now I don't have all the footage, but this is just for an example. So first things first, now that we got it labeled, we need to sync it to the song. So we're gonna take our performance number one, click on that. Let's put it, double click to put it in your source browse. And now we're gonna scrub through till we find the parts of the performance. As you can see, I already have it marked. So I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard to start the mark. And then O on my keyboard to end it. And what I'm, gonna, what I'm going to do is we're going to auto sync it. So we're gonna take the audio and the video, the entire clip and drag it into our timeline. So since this song is broken apart, I know exactly where it needs to go. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put it in the placement of what part of the song these shots are for. So it's about right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend my clip just so I have some more audio to give it to uh, sync. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our cursor over it and highlight both the song and the clip. And we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to synchronize. So synchronize pops up. And what we want is we want it on audio and track channel one. The main thing you wanna make sure is that your song is on track channel one because that's what it's going to go off of. It's going to sync everything to track one. So let's hit okay. And boom, we got it synced. So now we're gonna take performance number two, but actually first, let's double check and make sure that it's synced. Okay, so we, we got some, we got some uh, sinkage, you know? But anyway, so let's move on to performance number two. We're gonna add this in here. Now you can take all of them at one time and sync them. But for example's sake, I'm just going to show you step by step. So we're back here, we're synchronizing the clips. Audio, track one, okay. Boom, synchronize, let's make sure. Perfect, okay, now let's add in performance number three. And what I'm doing is I'm actually not going in and scrubbing through and finding the part that actually is him performing. I'm just gonna take the whole clip, put it in there, and then trim it in the timeline. So another thing you wanna make sure you don't do is overlap your audios or your audio file from previous clips, because we still want them all in sync. And it's important that you have all the audio to those previous clips that we already synced still there, because what we're gonna do is we gotta highlight all of them together at the same time to make sure they all sync. If you miss one, then it'll sync everything else and leave that one out. So I'm gonna sync again and hit okay. Perfect. Now let's look through it. And I got one more performance I'm gonna add in which is this one right here. So we're just gonna sync it again, highlight all of it, sync. Sorry guys, it keeps going to my second monitor. 
There we go. Okay. Now it looks like a mess, right? We're going to right click so we can do a ripple delete and bring the track and everything back to the front. So now that we got it all lined up, I know where I actually am in this song for these portions of performances. So now I'm just going to bring them all back, clean it up, make sure they kind of start even. There we go. So now we got a clean, clear timeline. And now we're going to stretch the timeline out, which is at the bottom. And let's hit play and then find the part of the song where we want it to start. Perfect. So this is where we're going to start. So the next thing what I do is, and I, I want to say this as well. I know a lot of people like to use multicam editing and that's fine. If that's what you like, go for it. But me personally, I've tried it. I've done it for a little while. It's not my thing. I really like going in and manually doing it and making the cuts because it leaves me open to kind of, I guess, some luck because Sometimes I get some random clips on here that just work and I couldn't have done it or planned it. It's just the way it flows. So basically now what we're gonna do, since we have all the clips lined up, we're gonna color grade. And the reason why I color grade next is because when I look at a flat image, it doesn't inspire me. And in the editing process, you want to be inspired as much as possible throughout the process. And real quick, I'm going to cut away all this excess. Okay, so. Let's start the color grade. So we're going to go into our media browser right here and we're going to go to new item. We're going to go to adjustment layer. Make sure that it's the dimensions of your sequence. So mine's 4K 3840 by 2160 and that it's 23 frames per second or 24 and we hit OK. And now we got our adjustment layer in the media browser. So we're going to drag the adjustment layer on top of our clips. And then we're going to push it up just to leave room so we can layer it with B-roll just in case. So what I'm going to do, this is me personally, I'm going to use my own set of LUTs, which if you want to purchase, there's a link in the description that has my store. Check them out. Let me know what y'all think. But anyways, let's get to color grading. All right, so now that I got my LUT applied, let's make some adjustments so we can just get it briefly going for now. So first thing I usually do is I'm going to crush the blacks. So I'm going to go to the curves right here, and I'm going to drag. There we go. Drag the blacks to the right, and then I'm going to get it to pop a little bit white. Perfect. And one thing I noticed is I don't like this heavy warmth. So I'm going to go to my hue and saturation and I'm actually going to turn it down. Okay, that looks good. That's where we want to be. Okay, so now that we got it color graded, it's time to cut. So we're going to start with expanding the waveform so we can get a better look at it and see the individual beats and then we're going to start cutting from there all right so let's get started so i wanted this scene right here specifically would start about right here so let's go ahead i want to start the first shot with the most impactful shot, which is a push-in shot, in my case, in the footage I have. So we're gonna start with that. So now, let's start cutting. So we're gonna cut on the second beat right here. So I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard to bring up my cutting tool. And then I'm going to cut through the layers, or you can hit shift and click and it'll cut through all the layers so now let's see what we got next let's drag this out and see what we're looking like hey so i want to do something with a in the song when we have like ad libs or just little specialty effects added in the song you want to take full advantage of it So for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut to the next beat, which is right here. 
and let's go through our performances and see what we're working with. I prefer not to go from medium to medium shots. I would like to go medium to tight or medium to wide. So we're gonna do that. So now we're hitting the next beat. Uh, it's important to make sure that it hits on beat. So you can have the optimized impact on each cut. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna drag my timeline a little bit over. Let's see. Okay, okay. So now we're working with this piece. Okay, cool, cool. Now we're working with something. So next what I'm going to do is <clears throat> for the impact shot, the very first shot you're gonna see in the next part of the song, we're gonna go to our effects control of this clip. And what I wanna do is I wanna do a scale in rotation. So we're gonna keyframe this. You're gonna go to your effects controls. You're gonna to toggle this little animation. You're gonna click on it. So what it's gonna do is gonna start your scale, which is at 100. And then we're gonna hit our rotation to make our point, our starting point. And then we're just gonna scrub through the clip. And then we're gonna zoom in a little bit. And then we're gonna add some rotation. So let's zoom in a little bit more so we're not showing those gaps in the frame. And now we're gonna highlight both of these and drag them to the end. Uh, that Just that little thing makes a huge difference. A little push in rotation, it's got heavy impact with low, I guess, work that goes into it. Hey. Okay, okay. So now that I got a little inspiration from it, Let's go back to our footage and we're gonna start layering it with B-roll. Let's click on B-roll number two and let's just scrub through it. So as you can see, I already slowed it down, but let me show you how I slowed it down. So with B-roll, a lot of times I'm shooting 60 frames per second. So with that in mind, I got to double click on it to make sure it's in my uh, source panel, right click and then go to modify. And then this screen is going to pop up. Now before, yours should probably show this. It's going to show this right here. It's going to, using the frame rate file of 59.9. But we want to slow it down. So we're going to go to assume and then type in 24 frames per second. So what that does is it's slowing it down already for us. So let's go, let's find the shot we want. Let's say right here, I'm going to start my end point and then my out point, which you can use I for end point, I mean beginning point, and then O for end point on your keyboard. So let's drag this in and let's see what we're working with. Okay, so since my timeline is 4K, it's 3840 by 2160 at 24 frames per second. My B-roll is 1080 at 60 frames per second. So because the size difference in dimensions of pixels, we're gonna click on the B-roll clip that's 1080, right click and go to scale to frame size to make sure it fits the same size. So let's play through. Okay, so I'm gonna just shorten it. And I wanna cut it before it does the A. Hey. hey! Cool, okay, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So let's scrub through the B roll some more. Let's grab some more clips. And there we go. I'm going to grab our hand, dragging it across the dresser. And we're going to do the same thing scale to frame size. Put it in my 
So actually what I want something, what I want to happen is I want it to go in and out. So these two B-roll sequences right here, they go together. I shot it that way and I have multiple angles for this one specific part, but I have other B-roll. So I want to intertwine the two and cut from each other just for a little bit more impact. So now I'm going to my previous B-roll, which is right here, B-roll number three, do the same thing, modify, interpret footage, and then as you can see, I already assumed this frame rate is 24 frames per second. So it's already slowed down. And let's just scrub through. Let me see where I can find the best shots. There's one in particular where she's in front of the tub and it's, a, it's like a wide shot. There we go. That's the one I'm looking for. So let me scrub through that. That's what I want. Perfect. Okay. okay, so now we're going to drag that into our timeline. Scale to frame size. Boom. So we're going to add an effect to it. So we're going to click on it, and we're going to do a speed ramping effect. And then we're going to right click on this clip, show keyframes, and then go to time remapping speed. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a smooth transition from slow to fast in the same clip. So right here, we're gonna drag this clip over the performance a little bit. And now that's, let's kind of spread out our timeline so we can see better. Hit P on your keyboard to get the pen tool. And our mark, we want to start where this clip starts, right on beat. So there we go. Now we're gonna hit we're going to click on that, on that little line that you see on your clip, and then we're going to hit V on our keyboard to get our cursor, and we're going to drag it up, because what we're doing is we're speeding it up now. So it sped up 400%, but let's play it. See, it's pretty good, but we can make it better. So we're going to take this clip, and we're going to drag it out, because we want it to be smooth and actually I'm going to speed it up probably to a thousand see what we can get with that and then we're going to rotate these little knobs that you see right here that's in the clip that's going to determine the smoothness the linear curve so as you can see the curve is smoothed out now still not enough impact for me so let's stretch it out. There we go. Boom, we'll cut it right there. And then we're going to take our other B-roll clip and just add it in there and then we'll build from there. So on the A! Remember I said we were going to do something with it? Well, we're going to figure that out now. Perfect. Okay. So one thing I like to do is I like to add assets to my projects, which I get a lot of my assets from Envato Elements, which is a subscription I have based, and they have tons of product. I got my film transitions, which is one of my favorite assets I have. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that in my media browser. I'm going to take this film transition and I'm going to place it on top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my effects control, click on the clip of the film burn, and then under opacity, we're going to change that to screen so we can see it transparent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drag it to make it transition better. Keep dragging it. There we go. We're getting somewhere. There is a sound effect that comes with these effects, or these assets, and they're perfect. I love the sound of them, but we need to turn it down because we want it to not take over the song. We just want it to add that hint of depth to add to it. Better, way, be way, way better, okay. So we're gonna keep scrubbing through our B-roll. And to make the Performance is more interesting. So since we're going back into a performance, we're gonna go back and keyframe some more to this performance. 
And what I'm doing is I'm cutting off just the portions I need of the performance that's going to show. This time we're going to start zoomed in, scaled in. So I went and scaled 156 and then I'm toggling the animation so I have it marked. And then I'm going to go to the end. Actually, this adds some rotation too. So since I'm scaled in 156, we can rotate a little bit. We have some room. So now I'm going to bring that to the beginning because our clip's going to start with the zoom in and rotation and then it's going to pull out of it. So let's see what that looks like. So basically what I did just now is I just hit the uh, reset parameter right here. It just resets it to normal and then we're going to drag it to the end because that's what we want it to look. We want it to go back to the end. Perfect. Perfect. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's bring up our song and the waveform so I could see it better. Make sure we're hitting beat. Perfect, there we go, there we go. Now, me just doing this to this small portion of the video, it applies to the entire music video. Take this and apply it to how you do your intros, how you structure your hooks, your verses. Like this goes for every type of editing for music videos. So it's not just to this specific project. And then I'm going to add one more B-roll. I know there's a piece of B-roll that I really like. That's a tight shot of her eyes. So let's add that into the timeline. Scale to frame size. So now let's put it in because I like quick cuts. You don't quick cut to everything, but certain songs, even if they're slow, you can still quick cut to them. Boom, hit beat. Place it in there. Actually, we want it quicker. So I'm gonna actually drag this into the clip below and then I'm gonna go into my effects panel and I'm gonna type in additive dissolve. Everybody should have this in their Premiere project. So it's a simple effect. It just adds a little flash. So let's actually cut back to performance. Perfect. There we go. And those are just simple cuts, simple effects, easy to do, and they look great. So now we got to export the video. Let's say this is the entire video. We're going to hit Control M. And these are my export settings. Let's start new. I already have my own YouTube um, preset. So we're going to go to custom. My format is H.264. We wanted to check off render at maximum depth. We want to do, especially for a project you're delivering to a client, we're going to do a two pass. And then we want our target bit rate to be 50. So we can get high quality. And then right here, you want to check off use maximum, maximum render quality. And then you're just going to hit export. And then we're done. Send the, send the file to your client. Get the next client. That's how we doing, son. Well, guys, that's it for the music video tutorial. I just wanted to update it from my previous tutorial and just show y'all my thought process behind it. Maybe the little things that have changed. Maybe that will impact how you edit, hopefully, in a good way. If y'all want to see more in-depth on how I shoot music videos, how I edit them, and then also my effects, and just my thought process behind things, comment below. I would be happy to share it, but I just need a bunch of people behind it to make it worth doing. Because these videos take a lot of time, and between client work and these videos, I have no time. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace, guys.